Hello, I'm Dr. Harper. This video is in Operations Management, and this video will cover the Aggregate Planning Excel templates as an overview. So let's bring up the Excel spreadsheet. Now in this file, I have eight different spreadsheets. I start with the uh, uh, Level Capacity, Chase Demand, and Mixed Aggregate Plans, the Solution Analysis Table. Uh, the second spreadsheet, I go through the LP Solution, which is minimizing the cost with the solver menu over here, the solver window. Uh, the third spreadsheet, then I go to the level, chase, mixed, and minimum cost with the solver window. But this time I have the extended, uh, the solution analysis table with an extended version to show how to solve it uh, with all the, all the uh, extended analysis. And then I have five spreadsheets that are progressive. I start with the linear programming with the solver window. And then I take the LP and then I add a safety stock of 200 here with the solver window and show where to do it, uh, where to include the safety stock. And the third one, I have the safety stock, but they, and then I add a cap on the FTEs of 110. And I show where to include that in the solver window. And then the next spreadsheet, I have the safety stock, but then I reduce the cap to 103 FTEs. So the cap is so small, uh, again, that that I have to introduce overtime. Because this cap, uh, the cap is not large enough to satisfy the entire demand, so now I have overtime. And the last one is I have a safety stock, a cap, overtime, but this time I have, this time I have a cap on the overtime. And so I show how to progressively add each one of those uh, to the spreadsheet. So let's go through it and let me show you the uh, just an overview of how to put the things together, how to put how to put each spreadsheet together. OK, let's let's enlarge this a little bit. Magnify it. And so for level capacity, you see here, you, the whole purpose of this first spreadsheet is you can go through here and actually see uh, like the ending inventory, there's the ending inventory, here's the FD calculations. You can see all the calculations on each one of these. The second spreadsheet is you can actually see the, um, let's enlarge this, let's go all the way to 200 magnif magnification. On this one, I have the setup from, from LP, and down here is the solution to LP. And I have the equations up here. But now you can bring down the, the solver and actually see exactly uh, how the solver is populated from the spreadsheet. K, the objective function is K34. Here's K. Here's 34. You see right here, this is column K, row 34. There's K34. Minimize. Uh, the objective, uh, the decision variable is the E28 to G31. E28 here. E to G. 28 to 31, and then the constraint sets. The con there's three constraints. The first constraint is the H, column H, uh, 28 through 31. This, this is the labor, uh, the conservation of labor. Uh, and then you have the J, 28 through 30, well, actually 28 through 30 here uh, for non-negativity for the ending inventory. Then the last constraint is the ending annual inventory then. And notice I, notice I have J31 equals C24. So J31 here equals C24. Well, I put the ending inventory in a cell. So now I can change that cell anytime I want and just rerun it without changing the constraint set. OK, so that's the second spreadsheet. Now the third spreadsheet is pretty much like the first and second one put together with an extended version of the solution analysis table, where I extend the inventory over here. Let's uh, enlarge this. Where notice I, I add the inventory here, and I put the uh, hire and fire in here, and the labor. I put everything pretty much together uh, for level here, and then for chase, and then for mixed, and then the minimum cost again, I solve it. Uh, pretty much the same. Uh, I go through the window for a solver, the menu, menus, and then solve it. 
In other words, for this third spreadsheet, I show you how, I show you how to solve it within the extended version of the analysis uh, table, of this uh, analysis table with the solution table. Then the next five videos uh, is progressional. Okay, the first one here is the minimum cost. I just repeat it here because I'm starting with a framework. And this is just the minimum cost again. And you can you can bring this in the K, the objective function right here is K16. You can see here it's K16 with E10 through G13. G13. Again, it is uh, uh, E through G. There we go. Uh, e through G and then 10 through 13. Uh, and then the three constraints that's just like we've done before where you have your H is going to be your uh, labor, uh, J is going to be your inventory, and then J13 equals C6. Okay, so that's exactly like the previous spreadsheet, but I set this up, move this out of the way here, I set this up, now I'm going to take this particular solution and then modify it, actually add to it. So LP2 I take the same one as LP1, but then I add, uh, you can see up here at the top, I add a minimum ending inventory of 200. So that 200 is a safety stock. So it's a safety stock. So you can bring the solver in. It's just an, an additional constraint right here. J12 through J15 equals 200. And so let's see, bring this back. And if you can see what I do here, I actually highlight it. J12 through J15. 12 through J15. All of these is greater, greater than or equal to 200, so it's just a safety stock. Okay, so it's not going to go below 200. And then the third, I take the safety stock of 200, just like we did before on, on the previous spreadsheet. Now this one, I add a FTE max cap of 110 FTEs. And so that's going to be for quarters 1, 2, 3, and 4 FTE here is going to be 110. You can see here, and there it is, G, G 14 through 17. G 14 through 17 is less than or equal to 110. So I just put 110 in there. But I put 110 up here. So instead of saying 110, I could have put E10 there. Well, I will in the next spreadsheet. Okay, so either one will work. And then solve it, and you get the solution. So this is a, a labor cap of FTEs. The next spreadsheet, I take the same labor cap. Uh, let's magnify this to 200 so we can see it. Uh, now I add a quarterly maximum FTE of 103. You can see here, here's my 103. Then I can bring this up here. And there's the G16 through G19. G16 through G19 is less than or equal to E12. Well, E12, and there's the cap in a cell. And so these are limited to be just 103. Well, when it's limited to 103, as it turns out, that's not enough capacity to satisfy the demand. So I need to add overtime. So if you notice up here, add overtime at the unit cost of $3 per item and regular time of $2 per item. So now I'm adding uh, the overtime and regular time costs of three and two. Well, when I do that now, well, then I have to change the, the setup a little bit. So my decision variables are still E. So now my decision variables are E through H. So now I'm changing my hire and fire and FTE just like I did before. But this time it's E through H, 16 through 19, E through H. But then I have to change my overtime. So now my overtime becomes a decision variable because I'll be changing overtime. Well, as it turns out, my objective function over here is still M22. See M22 here. So my objective function is still minimizing my total cost. So I'm going to, I'm going to, well, solver, not me, solver is going to create overtime to create a minimum cost. Well, in the lecture, we can have overtime to create different types of characteristics. Minimum inventory, minimum cost, etc., and that's just a view uh, to the memo that's coming up, uh, which we will talk about when we get there. 
OK, so now I've changed my decision variables. I've expanded them. Well, here's my G6 through G19. Is this, uh, where is it at? Here it is. My FTEs here, G6 through G19 is less than E12. That's my cap. Uh, but then uh, the other three are the same. Uh, my J here is my inventory. The L here is my ending inventory. Uh, and it's going to be uh, greater than or equal to my safety stock of 200. And the fourth constraint here is my ending annual inventory is going to equal, let's back up here, one. It's going to equal my ending annual inventory of 3,000. Okay, so that's how you've added that in. And then you solve it, and then you get the solution. When you solve it, you have non-negativity constraints, simplex algorithm, and then solve it. And you'll get this answer here. Now, the fifth one, the last spreadsheet that I'll overview here, let's enlarge this. Again, I'm going to start with uh, the one we had last time. Uh, I'm adding a safety stock of 200 like I did before, an F uh, labor max of 103 FTEs per quarter, uh, just like I did before. Uh, I have overtime like I did before. Uh, but now I add one more thing. That is, limit the overtime production to a percentage of the regular time production. Add a maximum overtime production of less than or equal to 10% of regular time production. So now I have a cap on FTEs from previous uh, spreadsheets, but now I have a cap on the overtime. And the cap on the overtime is going to be 10% of the regular time. So here's my regular time. Remember, regular time is just the FTE times the production standard. And we've done that all the way through. Okay, uh, that's the regular time. And so, but then, well, let's back up. Notice on this one, the previous one, when I had overtime, notice my regular time again is my production center times my FTEs, but then I have overtime. So my production plan equals my regular time plus my overtime. So my ending inventory still is my beginning inventory plus production minus demand. But now my production comes from the, uh, the, uh, the addition of regular time and overtime added together, where the regular time is calculated from the FTEs times the production standard, and the overtime is a decision variable. Well, I copy that over, do the same thing on the fifth one, the very same thing. I just add one more constraint, and that is my overtime here, max, is going to be my regular time times 10%. If you notice, as I come down, I do that each time. Regular time times 10%. Blue times blue times red. Oops. Blue times red. And then over here, I add the constraint where my H, my overtime, H, 18 through 21, H 18 through 21, is less than or equal to J uh, 18 through 21, which is going to be my max. So my overtime now has a cap. As it turns out, you see here, it does reach the cap. On some of these, it's going to spread the overtime around. Okay, so here's just some of the modifications uh, that that could be in an industry, uh, in a company with, with uh, aggregate planning. Uh, and there are a lot of others. Uh, but this is a start. Once you get going, you begin to see, oh, how to modify, modify, modify. And so this really illustrates one classic way of building models where you start back here, very simple, and then you keep adding, 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 adding to where the simple then is grows to become uh, realistic. But every time you add, it's still feasible. Now, if you start too complex, it may not be feasible. And so you'll never get a solution. But if you tar start too small, then it becomes not realistic and not, not that useful. And so you have to have that balance between feasibility and realism. And so if somewhere you come in, the, in between. So here's an example of beginning to add. So that's all I have for this video, just to show uh, the aggregate planning Excel templates and how they impact aggregate planning. 
And this, this will be part of the homework, part of the memos, part of the case studies. Here is where it's a foundation of planning for, for, aggregate, uh, for the aggregate top-down planning for uh, operations. That's all I have. I hope this helps. I'm Dr. Harper, and that's all I have for this video.